Hello there, this is Robert Sarat. I'm I'm starting something new. I'm making a series of kind of tutorials where I build stuff using the nodes in the node library. I'm calling it Know Your Nodes. It's going to be fun. Know Your Nodes. Uh, today we're going to start with uh, making your own oscillator. Making your own oscillator using the phaser node, my favorite of the synthesis nodes. Uh, what makes the phaser node so great, you might ask? Well, it's because it goes from 0 to 2 pi. And I can create a little sine function here. I just double tap on an input. Here, in the case, it's going to be the waveform node. Uh, and I can just type in an expression, say sine of x. And I can... Well, I could just directly connect it from the phaser. But I'm going to be making a lot of different waveforms from this particular output from the phaser. And if at some point in the future I want to put in a different source for modulation, I can use a via, which is just an input and an output uh, connected through a patch. And you can label the input or you can label the output. And you could uh, say that this is going to be 0 to 2 pi. Or I could label it phaser, or I could call it Harry, or I could call it LaCroix, Tangerine, Bubbly Soda. It really doesn't matter. Whatever is clear to you, and if you're sharing it with other people, what's clear to other people. So the phaser has a ramp wave that goes from 0 to 2 pi. It goes through the sine function, but there's nothing happening. That's because there are two inputs to a phaser. There's frequency and there's sync. And just for the time being, uh, we're going to make this a uh, one per octave input. And to do that, we have to make it a power of 2, an exponent of 2. And O is one per octave. And we multiply that by 440. And I'm just giving it a negative 10 octave, so it's whatever 440 is, you know, 10 octaves down. Now suddenly we have a sine wave because there's a ramp wave that's being created. Uh, and we can use that. We just have to divide it by 2 pi. Divide it by 2, divide it by pi. And there we go. It's a ramp wave that is the period of the sine wave. But it is unipolar, so... I'm going to double tap on that and create another expression. This one I'm going to be using over and over again. It's two x times two minus one or two times x minus one. I, I flip it around sometimes, keeps keeps things fresh. Uh, and now, now we have a ramp wave. But I actually like a sawtooth wave because it's easier to sync other oscillators outside of Audulus with a uh, sawtooth wave, which has a rising edge. So I'm going to invert that. Okay, so that is a sine wave and a sawtooth wave. Um, next up, we're going to do a triangle wave. Now, a triangle wave is basically we're going to take the sawtooth wave and take its absolute value, which holds it back on itself, creating a triangle. And this is actually how a sawtooth core analog oscillator would make a triangle wave. It just runs the sawtooth through a, a rectifier circuit and it does exactly what we're doing here with the expression creates the triangle however the way I've done it it is going to be more or less in sync with the sawtooth but out of phase by 25 degrees with the uh, or 25 percent out of phase with the, saw, uh, the sine wave but we can use phase modulation in a really simple simple static way to just shift that waveform over and make it line up. And that's basically where the ramp wave is being uh, wrapped around. So if the value is over one, it goes to uh, back to zero. And if it's under zero, it goes back up to one. And this fract function is, is very useful for that, specific to, to one. But you can do the same thing with the modulo function. You just have to specify the value that's being wrapped around. And if all this talk of modulo and fract and wrapping around is unclear at this point, don't worry. I'll go over this when we cover a lot more expression functions. Okay, next up is the pulse width wave. Pulse width wave in analog is just like a comparator. So at some point along the triangle or the ramp wave that's at the core of the oscillator, it'll say if it's above this value, create a gate high. And if it's not, create a gate low. 
and then they adjust it to be bipolar, or in some cases, they don't even do that. A lot of old analog synths is just unipolar positive uh, square waves. Sounds great. Uh, and so our comparator here is going to be a little logic expression. When x, the signal, is greater than the knob, k, times pi. So we take our 0 to 2 pi ramp wave, we put it in there, and voila. And this one goes all the way to 0. You can uh, create little pulse width modulation patterns that Nick Bat would enjoy. All right, so yeah, there it is, perfectly in phase with the sawtooth wave. And let's make that one bipolar 2. And wow, we're there. Uh, we have uh, a volt per octave input, or rather one per octave input. We have a sync input. We have all of these waveform outputs. Now we're going to group this together and make ourselves a module, a patch. We're lasso everything up. And we are going to right click and press group and larg. It's patch vomit. The Odulus tries its best to figure out how it should lay out a module, and I guess that's as good as it gets. Where the knob started out is where all the additional uh, elements that you create for a given module will stack up, so you want to move everything away from there. Oh, by the way, I just right click to uh, edit the user interface, and I double click on it to open it up. And once I do that, I can go in and I can relabel all of the inputs and the outputs just like I did with the VIA. And I can say that this one's a sine, that one's a saw, this is going to be a try, and we're going to have a pulse, PLS. I guess you could have a pull, PUL, or a SQR, squir. Uh, or you could get fancy and start importing scalable vector graphics. But let's, uh, let's save that for a different node tutorial. Uh, really, this is the art of Odulus, is making the uh, interface look balanced and usable and there's a whole philosophy on it i'm for this for this is I'm, I'm just gonna label everything very plainly the way that it's intuitive and the, the interface accommodates without too much fuss i have arranged my waveforms in terms of least harmonic content to most harmonic content i had a little issue with my sound card during the making of this particular tutorial so i won't be able to give you audio examples of this just yet i assume you know what a square and a sawtooth wave sound like but that doesn't mean we can't do something else with this particular oscillator. Let's see. Uh, let's make a little frequency sweep knob. How about that? By the way, I should mention that this patch that I'm making here will be available on the Audulous forum in its own post under tutorials. I'll be doing that for all the videos in the Know Your Node series. Each one will have its own forum thread. You can ask me questions about that particular patch. And yeah. The address forums, you should visit them. Enough said. Yay, it's a frequency knob. I'm using the crossfade node here to go from one value to the next. That's a handy way to make a frequency knob. And if I was really into it, I would label that as an O output because a frequency knob could also just be hertz. It could be a range of hertz. You could use the same thing with the crossfade node. And it's got a sync input, so let's see what the sync input does. Get rid of these vias. Those vias were there, by the way, so that when I grouped it, it would make a labeled uh, input. Because it will just copy and paste the name of the uh, attachment that the cord is going into. And it, I just find that it simplifies my life. And there you go. That's what hard sync looks like. You can make new waveforms out of waveforms that you have there. Okay, I think that's more or less it. Join me next time when I will cover phase modulation a little bit more carefully. Uh, but I'll show you how you can have any signal go in there and modulate it. All right, thanks.